Welcome to Portsmouth Insights, the show that's your window on economic development here in Portsmouth. I'm your host, Rob Lauer. Tourism is one of Virginia's biggest industries. In 2013 alone, Virginia generated $21.5 billion in revenues from tourists. That's a 1.4% increase over 2012. Virginia tourism in 2013 supported 213,000 jobs, an increase of 1.4% in employment, and it provided more than $1.42 billion in state and local taxes. Every $1 that Virginia invests in tourism marketing generates $5 in tax revenue for the Commonwealth. That's a 5 to 1 return on the investment. So, what role does Virginia tourism play in Portsmouth's economy? That's what we'll be exploring on this episode of Portsmouth Insights. Welcome to Portsmouth Insights. Tourism is a major industry in Virginia, with many of the state's top tourist destinations being right here in Hampton Roads. Portsmouth, besides being one of Virginia's oldest cities, is located in the heart of Hampton Roads, only a half hour from the Virginia Beach Ocean Front, and 45 minutes from Bush Gardens and Virginia's historic triangle of Yorktown, Jamestown, and Colonial Williamsburg. But Portsmouth is also home to some of the more unique tourist attractions in the Commonwealth, such as the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame and the Children's Museum of Virginia. Recently, I spoke to Martha Francis Fortson of the Portsmouth Museum Foundation. Well, Martha, how was it that the Children's Museum of Virginia ended up in Portsmouth? Well, Rob, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, it, it was originally the Children's Museum of Portsmouth. And uh, the, or and then it Tidewater Children's Museum and had several names mm -hmm. in, in its inception, but in the mid '90s, the Museum and Fine Arts Commission and I we give them all the credit for having the foresight mm -hmm. to say we need to have the Children's Museum of Virginia, and so with the blessing of the General Assembly and the group that very aggressively went after that name. We were granted that name, the Children's Museum of Virginia. And I will have to share this. <laughs> Richmond feels that they should have that name. They are the capital of the Commonwealth, and they feel that they should be granted that name. But it, um, it w won't happen as long as all of us <laughs> are around. <laughs> and that was in the mid-'90s, and we really thanked that commission and that group to have the foresight to do that because now, now we have the Children's Museum in, of Virginia in Portsmouth. Now in 2009 it closed down for about 18 months and then reopened in May of 2011. Completely new museum. Oh yes, I mean, oh literally, new. you know, sides taken out. I mean it, it, I mean you could see all the way through it. New um, HVAC, everything has been renovated and it is absolutely magnificent if you haven't been. Uh, we, we feel that we're state of the art. We love our port exhibit. There are just so many things that the design of this museum has, um, has, was put in that children of the Hampton Roads area as well as visitors and families and so forth um, see that we have captured on our locality. Yeah, and also certain things like the, the uh, Forces exhibit, which is like a circus. I mean, mm -hmm. these are really, you walk in, you're sort of wowed by right. the size and the scope right. of them. And My Backyard and Beyond. I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's a wonderful exhibit. But uh, we're very, very proud of um, the, of course, the museums, uh, very proud. Nancy Perry is director and our Porcelain Museums Foundation that raised all the money for the exhibits. And um, everybody um, needs a blue ribbon for this one because we really, really worked hard and it has it has really paid off. You know, how has it paid off as far as tourism goes? We're just coming off of the summer now mm -hmm. of 2014, and we have seen so many visitors from so many various states. And so far, with we have the numbers from January through the end of July, no, nothing for August yet, but we're, we're a little over 100,000 wow. visitors with a little under 20,000 in just the month of July. Of course, the Wizard of Oz exhibit has helped tremendously. Right. But I think, I think our citizens and our city ought to be so proud of the fact that we're able to bring those number one um, type of exhibits like the Wizard of Oz, and we're getting ready to have the Clifford the Big Red Dog. Mm -hmm. and 
it, it's so exciting to be able to have all of this in Portsmouth and to have a facility for it to come to and to show well. And you're not attracting just people from Hampton Roads or just Virginia. You're attracting people from all over the United oh, States. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's like yesterday um, was part of a weekend, and um, I drove into the parking lot. And there, could, there are probably a good 100 cars there, over half of them with out-of-state license plates. Have you got any response from people from out-of-state? I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I, we receive a lot of responses. Uh, and one in particular uh, that I'd like to share with you was a gal. Um, her parents were raised in Portsmouth, in Churchland, and they now live in Kings Mill, in the Kings Mill area. And she was here with her three little girls this summer, and she lives in downtown Manhattan, and her children go to public school in downtown Manhattan. And they are very mu museum-oriented family. Wherever they go, they go to the museum. Well, I got this wonderful letter back from the mother or from the mother when she returned mm -hmm. to New York City and said that the girls had agreed that this was the best museum that they had ever been to. Wow. So that did my heart proud. Plus, she wanted to be a part of our Batten Endowment Challenge Grant. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were thrilled. Those are the kind of real upbeat things that keep us going every day. Besides the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame and the Children's Museum of Virginia, Old Town Portsmouth is only a five minute ferry ride from the attractions of downtown Norfolk. Because of this, Portsmouth is ideally suited for the hospitality industry. So much so that one of the city's largest employers is the beautiful Renaissance Portsmouth Hotel and Waterfront Conference Center, with 140 employees. 244 rooms and five suites are available to guests. 24 meeting rooms, as well as the Grand Portsmouth Ballroom, which alone can accommodate 1,000 people, are also available. The entire Renaissance Conference Center offers stunning waterfront views of the Elizabeth River and the Norfolk skyline. Old Town also has a wealth of historic homes from the 1700s and the 1800s, all beautifully situated along quiet, tree-lined streets. This makes Old Town the perfect location for bed and breakfast inns. At 222 North Street stands the Glencoe Inn. Owned and operated by Ann McGowan, it is Old Town's oldest bed and breakfast. I'm sitting on the beautiful front porch, the Glencoe Bed and Breakfast here in Old Town. It's a gorgeous morning, and I'm joined by Ann McGowan, and you are the proprietors of I the I am. <laughs> yes. How long have you been here? Uh, we opened here in 1991. And you were the very first? Very first bed and breakfast to open in Old Town. Wow. Yeah. So how did that come about? Well, there had not been any uh, bed and breakfast in Old Town, and the city manager at the time, George Hanbury, had suggested that he would like to see some bed and breakfast in the historic district. Mm -hmm. And I had had a little restaurant business previously uh, in the Portsmouth, and um, I'm also interested in historic preservation, mm -hmm. and so I thought that this would be a great, uh, great opportunity to be able to work and stay in Old Town. Wow. So you saved a historic property? I did. Moved into a beautiful home. Yeah, <laughs> what I, was the condition of this when you first bought uh, it? Well, the house had been empty for six years, and uh, anytime you have an old property that um, doesn't have any heat um, or water, usually the pipes are burst and the plaster's down, uh, and, no and nothing had been renovated since the 1940s. So it was in a pretty bad condition. However, the great thing about it was because it hadn't been renovated, it still had all the original fixtures. Oh, wow. So all the woodwork is the original to the house, mm -hmm. the light fixtures are original to the house. So that was great. Uh, I liked it. <laughs> so how many rooms do you, do you have here for guests? Uh, just four. Just four. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that way it's uh, very comfortable and it's very personable and we get to know our guests that way. So are there busy seasons or are there slow seasons? We have uh, business people all year round, and of course, recreational people uh, are generally from uh, May through maybe October. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in January and February, we don't usually have recreational guests, it's generally business people. So the weekends on uh, the winter months are a little quieter. So you have a lot of people, I guess, stay here during the week who've come to work, like at the Naval Hospital or doing. Think right. Business in town. We get uh, guests, uh, perhaps doctors that are coming in for the Naval Hospital, and they're usually here uh, maybe 10 days. Mm -hmm. And um, we get some uh, interns coming down from uh, VCU, uh, medical uh, students that maybe stay for about the same 10 days and do some work in some of the local clinics. 
Uh, we get consultants from the Department of Defense coming down mm -hmm. and uh, maybe with the Joint Forces Command. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, uh, maybe some contractors who come in for the shipyard um, or the Coast Guard. Yeah. yeah. So what have been some of the uh, the challenges? I mean, since you were the very first bed and breakfast in, in Old Town, were there challenges along the way early on? Uh, when we first started, um, it was really great. The city were wonderful, and the neighborhood was terrific. And we went according to the ordinance that was produced, and so that was absolutely fine. So uh, at the beginning, I think it's uh, labor-intensive mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and, uh, and time-consuming in the sense that you have to be here all the time. And, uh, and you live at work. <laughs> and live at work, absolutely. Um, I think the challenges, not so much for the bed and breakfast, the challenges are always for historic property. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an old house. It's always fallen down and you're always putting it back up again. So there's <laughs> always, you know, there's always challenges. Then the challenges are to try and get repairs done in between guests coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're using, uh, when you're trying to paint, you don't want that smell of, oil paint <laughs> or permeating the house With people or someone in for a trying day or to two. fix the roof, you know, bang, 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 when, you know, so you're, you're always trying to work around. Um, but um, no, I, you know, originally had been a school teacher, so I'm so used to people being around me all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was great. I mean, I love people coming in mm -hmm. and uh, so they're not a challenge. <laughs> they're not a challenge at so all. So what are the rewards of, of doing this, would uh, you say? Well, you get to meet people all the time, new people all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I love it when you get people from all different parts of the country. And if they have children, for example, the children are all doing the same thing. They're either all into the same sport <laughs> or they're all into uh, the same music program. Mm. And... Uh, uh, and I like that. I like to share that because I was in education, so I like to listen to all their stories about their children. Oh. Well, yeah. thank you so much for taking time to, okay. to tell us about It's a beautiful place. If people want to find out more about it, like maybe make reservations, or right. maybe they have relatives or friends coming to visit, right. should they just go to your website? I'm on the web. Mm -hmm. It's www.glencoen.com, G-L-E-N-C-O-E-I-N-N.com. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. When we return to Portsmouth Insights, we'll continue our look at tourism and its role in the city's economy. Stay tuned. Beautiful Portsmouth, central and changing, home to Craddock, planned from the beginning as a crossroad for families, business, and community activities. There's room for you. Get more in Portsmouth. Welcome back to Portsmouth Insights and our look at the role of tourism in the city's economy. When tourists arrive in Portsmouth, it's natural that they should stop in the Portsmouth Visitor Center, located at Portside on the Old Town waterfront. But as Visitor Service Manager Carolyn Penny explains, the center does much more than hand out travel brochures. Caroline, welcome again. Thanks for joining us today. Now, the Visitor Center, we know that it's here, we know that it's opened every day of the week and such, but what do you do specifically for like convention services, uh, tourism, hotels, inns, boaters that come here? What types of services do you offer? In Portsmouth, we have a lovely hotel, the Renaissance, mm -hmm. of course, and they have a lot of conventions, a lot of meetings, a lot of weddings. We also have some other hotels that are also quite lovely that really are wonderful for overflow if mm -hmm. there's a lot of people here. We do information tables. Um, there's no charge to the group. We have our ladies uh, set up a table and have all of our brochures. 
um, and you actually can speak to a real life person which is kind of neat um, they tell you where you can go to dine or shopping or maybe you just want to buy a pair of stockings <laughs> uh, so it's nice to have our ladies there we also do bags um, and they're called welcome bags mm -hmm. and we fill them up with all of the Portsmouth brochures and maps and our restaurant guide and retail guide and whenever there's coupons available um, and anything new that's going on whether oh. it's an art show or a concert in Tellos and this way the people when they're finished with whatever it is they're here for they can go on their own and because we are a walkable downtown they can hit all the local spots that we love. That's great. Um, we also um, help the meeting planners find off-site places. Although the Renaissance is lovely and has a fabulous restaurant and bar, mm -hmm. sometimes they just want to have an off-site event. So we have helped them book the Children's Museum. Um, you can get all dolled up and wear sneakers. Uh, <laughs> we have done parties at the Sports Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. We have called for some executive meetings where they just want to have cocktails or something at places like Still or Roger Brown's or Griff's or any of the local places downtown. I was impressed by some, <laughs> some little services that you offer, yeah. such as uh, people who come here to the marinas and maybe they dock here for a few days or even a few weeks or a month or so. We have a lending library which they bring a book mm -hmm. and take a book <laughs> and there's no charge. Um, now there's also the audio which people love to hear. Mm -hmm. um, we have a cart that when they go shopping they can go up High Street um, and so far it's the honor system but everybody's honest that comes to Portsmouth. <laughs> um, so we're pretty happy about that. Of course the Lending Library is sponsored by the Friends of the Portsmouth Library. Uh -huh. So they started it, they got the bookshelf, uh, Old Town Business Association sponsors the cart. Um, we have a pump out station here, um, which boat is, and all of these things are free, which in many cities, there's a charge for a lot of this stuff. We're just so happy that you came. <laughs> what we really want is you to come back. And, and they do. With this type of service, yeah, do. why Why and wouldn't they? So, And the boaters will ask, where can they go? And some of them are only here for maybe three days. Mm -hmm. Others are doing repairs or whatever. So sometimes they'll want to know about a hotel, just want to kind of get in a real bed, you know, rather mm -hmm. than be on the boat. Um, <laughs> so we help with those things. Or their families are coming to meet them because we get a lot of world travelers. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll be doing the whole Whatever East Coast, it is where they the go, Intercontinental and, Waterway um, and all that. And then they'll meet their families, wow. which is kind of neat. So we'll help them find a hotel or, you know, places to take them to dinner or whatever. So it's kind of neat. Go to the Children's Museum. A lot of grandchildren will meet grandma and grandpa. Okay. So that works. So whether you're a single person or a family or coming to a conference here, Come to you guys really, center. you, you yes. are your, the gateway to Portsmouth. You got that right. We will <laughs> tell right. you where to go and what to do. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for joining us and telling Thank us all about it. Thank you so much. We really love Portsmouth and we want everybody to come back. Last year in 2013, the city hired David J. Schulte to serve as its tourism administrator within the city's Department of Economic Development. Recently, I visited David to learn more about the city's efforts to bring in more tourism dollars. David, thanks mm -hmm. for joining us today. My pleasure. So, what is your position and when were you hired? Well, the city created a new tourism administrator position just about a year ago, July 1st of last year. It was uh, the initiative of the city manager. Mm -hmm. And so I've been on board about a year and it's, it's been a great experience. So why the need for that position? Well, years ago, uh, the city had a convention and visitors bureau, as do all communities in Hampton Roads mm -hmm. and throughout the state of Virginia. The convention and visitors bureau promoted the city as a place for group tours, conventions, and, and just regular mm -hmm. tourists. Uh, when the big e economic crunch hit, in 2007, the city found it necessary to pare back some positions, mm -hmm. and unfortunately that was eliminated. But last year, Mr. Rowe, the city manager, decided that he wanted to re-up the city's tourism promotion efforts. Mm -hmm. So he created the position, 
and I was brought on board. It's important to remember, though, however, that the city never did really abandon all of its tourism promotion mm -hmm. efforts. The Marketing and Communications Department took on two of the staff members from the old Convention of Visitors Bureau uh -huh. and continued to do a lot of the work that most cities do for tourism promotion. So what is, um, well, I guess, what does the city try to promote? Uh, what type of tourism? Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly somebody in California is not going to say, oh, let's go to Portsmouth, mm -hmm. Virginia for our vacation. Mm -hmm. But there is so much in the area. Right. Is this right. Uh, is the city mm -hmm. promoted as a place to stay, as a place to visit on day trips? What, ex what approach is being taken? The majority of our visitors are day trippers, people visiting Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. Norfolk, Williamsburg. But you'd really be surprised at the number of people who come here specifically because they've heard of Old Town. Mm -hmm. They're very into American history. People from all over the state come here for the Children's Museum of Virginia, as, as they do for the uh, Virginia Sports Hall of Fame and Museum. Mm -hmm. And one of the big generators of tourists is right up the river here. The, the Renaissance Hotel is mm. a major conference property, and they have tens of thousands of people each year coming here for meetings. And those people get out of the hotel and eat up and down High Street and throughout the city as well. Mm. So there are really three primary sources of tourists, day trippers from um, the Hampton Roads region, or as we call it, coastal Virginia, mm. uh, people here for conferences. And then we're going back after the bus tour business as well. Okay, tell People. us about, about that. Would that be mm -hmm. bus tours from f distance or just bus tours from... It's a combination of both. It's uh, primarily senior groups who are interested in history who might come for a either a walking tour or a step-on guided bus tour of Old Town. Mm -hmm. It's school gr groups and youth groups who might come for the Children's Museum and the Sports Hall of Fame. So we're trying to get back into that market as well. Okay. Is there mm -hmm. a, other businesses, tour bus tour businesses here in Portsmouth that you would work with? Other There areas? are a couple, but they tend to be from out, uh, throughout the state of Virginia and even throughout the, the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, we tend to get day trips who are coming here for a one-day visit, mm -hmm. or they might be coming here for for a day in conjunction with a trip to, to Williamsburg or Virginia Beach. Okay, so economically, mm -hmm. what is the impact of tourism on our economy? Well, most people are very surprised to learn that the Virginia Tourism Corporation does a study each year. Mm -hmm. And for the last year in which the study was done, they identified about $77 million is spent by wow. visitors to Portsmouth. Now that's not the all, <laughs> the ports, that's not just tourists, that includes people who are here for business purposes mm -hmm. as well, but a healthy percentage of that are people here from out of town. i give you a great example. Last summer, I was taking a stroll through Old Town uh, after dark, mm -hmm. and I ran across uh, Ricky Price, who's the Colonel Crawford interpreter, mm -hmm. and Ricky introduced me to a family from France that was <laughs> touring Old Town. They had sailed their sailboat across the Atlantic and they were going up and down the intercoastal. Mm -hmm. And Portsmouth is right on mile marker zero of the intercoastal. Right. So Ricky has told me that they, they, there are literally hundreds if not thousands of families each year who visit Portsmouth because they're touring the intercoastal. Wow, okay. So what is the future looking mm -hmm. like? Are there, are there mm -hmm. directions, things that you're focusing right now mm -hmm. upon? Well, as I said, we have continued uh, over the years our advertising aimed at tourists. The city has a very aggressive schedule of special events that our, our Parks and Recreation Department do a great job in putting together each year, so that attracts folks. But my specific focus right now is to get us back in the bus tour business, but also to go after uh, travel writers. Uh, travel writers and bloggers are all over the U.S., and they're mm -hmm. always looking for something new and interesting to write about, so that's our pitch. And I'm really pleased to report that we've actually landed one of the major travel writer conferences in the country. Oh. Next May, the Society of American Travel Writers will hold their Eastern U.S. chapter conference here at the Renaissance. Oh, that's great. So we'll have about 40 of the country's top travel writers here for three or four days. The captive audience. <laughs> they'll be touring Portsmouth, and they'll be touring other areas in coastal Virginia as well. Fantastic. Well, so we're very excited about that. Well, continued luck and, well, uh, you. You know, in what you're doing, and uh, thanks for joining us today and telling you're us about welcome. it. You're very welcome. When we return to Portsmouth Insights, we'll take a look at a very unusual neighborhood, one that's especially welcoming to tourists. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Portsmouth, Virginia. Central, revitalized, changing. Living downtown is unique, the place to be. Convenient, energized, happening. The Metro's trendy address. You get more in Portsmouth.
Welcome back to Portsmouth Insights and our look at the role of tourism in the city's economy. How do neighborhoods fit into the tourism equation? Well, we might start by asking, what are we talking about when we use the word neighborhood? Most of us mean a specific place where people live in close proximity to one another, a place where people share a sense of community, a place that's a refuge of sorts from work and the demands of the outside world, a place where we can relax, a place where we can feel at home. All of these definitions could be applied to Ocean Marine's marina, situated on the southern branch of the Elizabeth River next to Portsmouth City Hall. Boaters, both local and those visiting from afar, appreciate Ocean Marine's prime location, one half mile south of mile marker zero on the intercoastal waterway, and its unrestricted access to the sea. To dock there is to be welcomed into a unique community, a place where one can live for days or weeks, a place that feels like home, a place that, for all practical purposes, is a neighborhood. I'm Jim Bento with Ocean Marine Yacht Center. I'm the president and CEO, and uh, been there for, we built uh, Ocean Marine Yacht Center in downtown Portsmouth in 2001. The marina is 122 slips. Um, they're all what we call floating docks so that the docks rise and fall with the tide as well so it's very convenient for the boaters. Um, we have a nice marine store where they can buy supplies and some small food items and you know beverages and things. We have uh, really nice showers and locker rooms for, for men and women and we also have a, a really nice laundry facility for people that are passing through and need to catch up on their laundry and things like that. So it's a full service facility. It's a very interesting community. We have um, overnight dockage and we have uh, annual contracts and everything in between. So you have people who keep their boats there long, long term and been with us for many years and then all the way down to the transient who just happens to be passing by. But it's a, it's a very neat dynamic because people get to know each other and, and even if they're just passing through, they tend to come back on their way south, coming back in the fall and visit with us again and renew friendships. And, and it's, it's kind of a very nice dynamic with a lot of different people involved. We have uh, people that keep their boats here, obviously locally, but, but then we have uh, boaters that live in North Carolina, all the way up in DC. We have one that lives in Maine and he likes to come down and do the Chesapeake Bay. So it's, it's an interesting, again, mix of people from all over. It's, it's not one, one, one place or another. But we have a couple that are both are school teachers. So they tend to come down and they spend at least a month during the summer on their boat here, um, use it like their cottage. Uh, there are other people that do several long weekends, again, using it like a cottage. So it's kind, of, it's kind of fun. And some of them even want to move around and go to some of the other local marinas just to have fun while they're on vacation. So it is like a beach cottage right on the water. We're very seasonal. Um, you know, dur during the height of the summer, and obviously, you know, just a little bit before Christmas and through the winter, it's, it's, kind of, it's very quiet over there. Um, but, but during the other seasons, um, the spring, we have a huge migration from folks going from Florida all the way up to the New England states. Um, and so that's a very busy time for us, as well as all the local and regional owners of boats start to, to show up. And, and so the place comes alive in the spring. Um, also, we have during the summer and fall uh, quite a few event days. Um, you know, because we're in downtown Portsmouth, we have the Intellis Pavilion next door. We have the downtown restaurants and things available to us. And, and of course, we now have the farmer's market and all the entertainment. So people tend to gravitate to that. And, and we see, you know, seasonally that they come out for all those events that the city puts on as well. And then they'll spend the night on the boat, make a weekend of it. We do quite a few barbecues during the summer. And we have that nice deck with a little tent top over it. And people will go there. But it, I can assure you it doesn't end there. <laughs> After we do our little barbecue for dinner, or something, then it spreads to the docks and you could walk down on any one of our docks and the people are sitting out on the back of their boat, socializing, just having a really nice time. Uh, and, it, and it'll go on you know, well into the early morning hours, <laughs> just like anywhere else. So it is a community and everybody gets to know each other. The, the long-term folks tend to really care what happens to the marina and then when we have the transient people or the people that just use their boats for the weekends, they, they tend to share all those experience with them. So it's a very neat community. The employees um, at any marina, but you know, specifically at Ocean Marine, um, those boats require a lot of repair, maintenance, service. And so it's an interesting thing that uh, some of our uh, clients will pick a certain mechanic or a certain dockhand that they really like 
-hmm. and they'll ask for them by name so they become part of that community. It's a neighborhood. It's a community. People really bond together and, and it's a lot of fun. And I think this goes on in any marina I've been to. That's our show for today. We hope you've enjoyed learning just a bit about the role that tourism plays in our city's economy. I'm Rob Lauer. Join me next time for another episode of Portsmouth Insights, your window on economic development in Portsmouth.